Greetings, sports fans. I'm Brad Radford, alongside my co-host, Chip Whipley. Chip Whipley here. And we're here to talk about Smosh Summer Games and 2019. And what a games it was. It was, what Chip. What a games it, it was. It really was. Today we're going over the highs, the lows. We're gonna see how it all ended up and how we got there. Let's go! Now in 2019, we had two very evenly matched teams. It was Team Toxicity against Team Mushroom Clout. Well, the first game was the Punishment Zombie Shootout. And what a way to start in the apocalypse. You must expect to see some form of zombies. And in this case, the celebrities were out walking. <laughs> oh, 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 a was... promising young man uh, by the name of Mr. Jovenshire. Now, I would say, though handsome, his eyesight not good. Well, handsome isn't quite the word I, I would use. I would, I think Promising, he's would. got a lot of potential. Chip Chipley, you're saying? That's one handsome. Your name's dude. Chip Whipley. That too. Whipley. Yeah, my That's middle Chipley. name though is Chipley. Oh, Chip Chipley Whipley. <laughs> my parents hated That's me. That's great. Now, Wesley actually managed to score a headshot. He uh, did. Which gave Toxicity a slight lead. But then this it. man, uh, the Jovenshire, came in and he scored another headshot. Very little did people think about him. No one thought a yes. headshot would come. No! And it was just boom! No, there. public opinion of him yeah. was very low. That's correct. Some say that uh, through Native American uh, yodeling, he actually was able to see just by the sounds around him. No one says that. Now, after he hit that headshot, there was uh, quite a, a distressing moment. Oh. A moment I found to be hard to watch. Because as we know, once you hit it, to get the points, yes. you must then do the punishment. <laughs> I, think, I think our audience knows the rules of the game. It's been around for centuries. 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 And uh, yes, yes, so his punishment was to, uh, it was called suck dystopia. Dystopia. And he must suck the toe of an opponent. Victim. Victim, yes. Now he actually used this punishment as more of a psychological torture against Team Mushroom Cloud, what you I say? Which I think is a smart play. Well, yes. If you're gonna go down, take someone else with you. Smart, yes, but also- Intelligent. Mm, nay, brilliant. But also very- Nay, Einsteinian. Very creepy. It's clear the man has a foot fetish if you go to the tape. Yes, that's not how normal men react to uh, to being forced to suck on I, I, hot, nasty desert feet. That is not how normal people react. I do agree with that statement 100%. I will give that the Chip Whipley seal of non-approval. And the Brad Radford seal of uh, the very creepy. Though I heard that he willed it into existence. Thus, who wastes their psychic yes, abilities? Yes, that's not a real thing. Okay. Moving on. Now, one more point from this competition. A surprising miss from Mr. Ian Hecox. Yep. Hecox. Uh, I believe the E is silent. Hecox. 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 Uh, oh, yes. Uh, a disturbing miss, especially based on his history of uh, no-look shots yeah. actually hitting targets. You know, we, we saw some great shots from Toxicity, and we did expect high things, high hopes. We had high hopes for uh, Mr. Ian Cox. But he ended up running up that miss counter. Yeah. Yes. Uh, one might say if it ain't working, stop trying. Yeah, one might say that. But in the end, Team Toxicity proved victorious, bringing the score to one to zero in favor of Team Toxicity. Moving on now to Nuclear Family Feud. Quite the game. Next event, next episode, next show. What? <laughs> Were you going somewhere with that? No, I was ramping up energy. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yes, uh, the players faced off in a test of knowledge. Not about trivia or history or anything oh, stupid no, like that, that nothing, but nothing of necessity. each other. Now, what's interesting here is Mushroom Cloud scored a perfect score, and I'm not sure if I agree with this, but every single member of their team said that Lasercorn had the worst style on the team. I'm not sure I agree with this, Chip. Chip, what do you think? I agree. Well, you're wrong, Chip. Uh, thank you for putting in your two cents, but everything you say is incorrect. So Normal. clearly, uh, clearly, although they I don't all know, agree... I have seen him not only wear well, shorts to uh, red carpet events... Shorts are in style. Listen, not he's a... since the 1920s have shorts been in style. He's and a... that was only because they were worn by the fashionable children of the working class. Well, first of all, that doesn't sound correct at all. But uh, the newsies wore them mm, as they peddled their papes. I've seen that play. They didn't. It seems like some sort of coordination 
on the part of Team Mushroom Cloud, almost to put in kind of a, a joke answer or, ah. or do the opposite of what people would expect, which is to make this very stylish man appear to be not stylish. You know, as an individual, a professional who must have an unbiased opinion on the news, would you like to care to maybe alter your death? Your no, okay. no, that is a completely unbiased take, uh, but they did score a perfect score there. So, you know, Team Mushroom Cloud had a lot of hope going into this competition. Now, Chip, what did you think of over on Team Toxicity? A, a lot of votes for the Jovenshire, for least responsible member of Team Toxicity. I was surprised by this. Watching this, my jaw stayed closer to the ground than in the 1987 Olympics. Wait, I don't think that, I don't believe that was an Olympic year. No, no, the Special Olympics. Uh, okay. Those All are, right. That, no, those are great those competitors. Are, are I great was competitors. shocked the whole time. It was but a close race. They don't do that. Do it on the same year as the regular Olympics? No, I don't know. Okay. Everything I say is wrong. <laughs> anyway, uh, very. I was shocked by the response of the toxicity team, really trying to throw Jovenshire under the bridge. Uh, saying... It's under the bus, Chip. The saying is under the bus. No one has ever said under the bridge. But he's a Go troll. Go on, continue. No, okay. He's a uh, troll. <laughs> So, and, and saying that he's the, the most irresponsible, little did they know though, you can't just go with an answer that you believe, but what the uh, the one hotspot guesser believed. Well, I think this was a, a tragic misplay on the part of one Mari Takahashi going with Olivia Sue over over the Jovenshire who Chip, Chip, he's just an irresponsible, uh, Is a he, very uh, a I juvenile, hear, I hear irresponsible he man. He owns. He owns his own home? Yeah. Yes. Yes. yes, he does. I don't know if he could pay for it. Yes, uh, I Not believe he's anything. six or seven mortgage payments behind I... and well, on the edge of eviction. Clearly a misplay by Mari Takahashi. Now, Chip, this competition came down to overtime. It was very close. It was a tie score. It was a tense moment. A tense moment came down to biggest ship. Who, shi who gets shipped the most? Who ships the shapes? I, I once rode a ship. Did you? I did once. Oh, okay. Yes. What was that like? Uh, I threw up a lot, uh, and I commandeered it, and uh, I looked at the captain, and I said, now I'm the captain, okay. and then we rode off into the sunset. Well, okay, all I heard about that was you threw up a lot, and I'm gonna give you a quick tip. Uh, about half a shot of pure mercury, you can just break open the thermometer, pour it right in there. Oh. Cure, uh, it'll cure that, that, yes, cure little, that seasickness right off. Little sea tummy, yeah. gone. Gone. All right. You will get cancer. So it all came down to the greatest ship. And uh, you know, Shane had a good suggestion, Ian and Anthony. I still to this day, Quite the day, ship. I look at the poster on my wall and I, and I kiss my lips and I kiss the faces and I kiss the face. I'm like together forever, forever. in our minds. Uh, but it turns out, it turns out that most people uh, ship this uh, this young fellow named Shane. And, uh, Shane. And 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 the. I thought it was pronounced Sanye. Sanye, no. And, uh, and like his Sanye female... Stark. Sanye Stark. No. Nope. No, different. No, oh. him and his female counterpart. Uh, I believe her name is Courtney Miller. Are Ooh. the most shipped? Yes. I wouldn't know anything about that, but apparently there's a there's a shipping that happens. Uh, who do you ship? What? I uh, ship Sir Reginald Thoroughbred and oh. Prince Harry S. Truman. You know, I too ship Courtney, but it's actually Courtney's toe in Jovenshire. I feel like the two of them are made no, to be together. No, your obsession with toes and feet. I'm sorry, the Jovenshire's obsession also, with toes Also, Chip and feet. Whipley has an obsession with feet. Well, that's disturbing. Anyway, Team Toxicity in the end edges, edges them out. Takes another win. Another win. Making I, the score. I felt like they were underdogs. Yes, yes, me too. Especially with that Jovenshire fellow on the team. Making the score two to zero. Moving on, Chip. Uh, the next competition in these 2019 Summer Games was, of course, Zombie Red Light Green Light. Quite possibly my favorite of all of the games throughout the centuries of Smosh Summer Games. Yes, yes. yes. Even better than the year 1876's uh, head basketball. Head basketball. Played with real heads, yes. Different times, different times then. Anyway, uh, there was some controversy. There was some controversy in this game. Uh, a lot Hot. of people believed that the refs had unfairly stopped Team Toxicity. Uh, do from, you, from do you feel it was now, unfair? Now, Chip, I've watched this competition, uh, competition. Many, competition. competition many times in review, and let me tell you something. The most important stop is the very first stop, okay? Now, when Mushroom Clout was the zombies, their very first attack was stopped short. Uh, you can see uh, the, the young man Lasercorn very close 
to grabbing a target and if hitting their brains. If only his arms weren't so short and Well, they're stumpy. not short. They're not short arms. They're regular length arms. And his arms. fingers are The average height. Okay, I will kill you. As I was saying, the very first stoppage, the most important one, and Team Mushroom Clout allowed to catch zero of their opponents, while Team Toxicity allowed to catch three. Three! They could have stopped that music at any time. Well, they saw some might say it's because they went second. They maybe had a, a, an unfair advantage of knowing the movements. Yes, yes. They might have had an unfair advantage of knowing the movements, but the rest could have easily stopped them uh, from getting three players in one go, and they did not. I would like to point that out. Of this particular yes, game. it didn't matter that three went out in a row because no. Keith Leak. Mr. Keith Leak of the, the second. Keith Leak the second. Keith Leak the speed streak, as I like to call him, because he was too fast. Too fast, not at all furious. Not furious, Moving around but... the dust like he was a little larva worm. Yes, stealthy. Well, are larva known for their stealthiness? I don't know, I've never seen one. I've so never I seen one. they are stealthy. Oh, okay. That actually makes a lot of sense. I too have never seen a larva. There could be one in this room this very moment. Anyway, he was clearly the MVP of this match. They just could not catch him for the life of he them. He was like a greased up pig in an Alabama rodeo. That is that is an apt analogy. He was, what's that? An apt analogy? A oh, an a I thought it was like an apt analogy. No, no, no. Uh, an a, apt a, analogy, yes. A fitting yes. simile. He was like a chicken running loose away from Rocky as he trained. Okay, that's enough analogies. Okay. Uh, yes, but Keith's excellent play actually allowed Team Mushroom Cloud to claim their first victory, it making the score Team Mushroom Cloud 1, Team Toxicity 2. Moving on, Mr. Chip Whipley, we have up next the Slippery Snakes Challenge. Or as I like to call it, Tuesday night. Mmm, <laughs> your Tuesday nights must be strange. Now, this, uh, really, what it boiled down to was a clash of two titans. I'm talking, of course, about Courtney Miller for Team Mushroom Clout and Ian Hikooks for Team What Toxicity. does he cook? He cooks snakes, apparently. Okay. Now, Courtney Miller, she came out strong. She came out hard. And she just could not be stopped. She caught nearly anything that came near her. Yeah, any snakes flying through the air, any porcupines snakes, lizards, levitating porcupines. Towards her direction. Yes, she just sucked him up like a giant vacuum or some sort of black hole. There was no escape, and really, really a phenomenal performance. Well, it was very. Impressive. Now on the other side of the field, you had Mr. Ian Hecox, who himself caught quite a few critters. Was enraged by the very sight of flying critters. Apparently, he just snatched them from snatched the them out of the ground at one point. Double fisting snakes, grabbing two snakes at once, and you can tell he was used to grabbing two Dude, long, just long, slippery snakes. snakes like in his, his hands. motion was yes. very impressive. Yes, yes, like his hands just naturally fit around those snakes and grip them with a strength and a, and a dexterity. They were slippery. They were slippery. And they he were did not let go. They were lubed up, and no, they could not escape his grip. It's as if he had some sort of strange practice doing that. Also, uh, we had our first uh, first instance of, of some chicanery, some shenanigans, some cheating. Uh, our, our first case uh, documented of, of cheating. Yes. yes, correct. Mr. Jovenshire in a oh. shameful, shameful Speaking display. of slippery snakes. Yes, picked one up right off the ground and attempted to claim uh, that he had snatched it from the but air. They were quick and they were, they were smarter than him. And but in another case of excellent reffing, uh, they caught him. They caught him, the replay cam Quite caught him. possibly some of the best reffing that we've seen to date. Yes, yes, possibly. excellent, excellent reffing. And, so, uh, unfortunately good at catching cheaters. Yes, and in the end, Mushroom Clout reigns supreme. I'd also like to point out that Laser Coin caught a thing, so he wasn't completely useless. <laughs> Not completely. Now, Chip, this next competition took us into the medical field a bit. Operation. And uh, unfortunately, we did it. There was a delay in the summer games because each uh, practitioner actually had to go through eight years of college yes. before being able to do this particular <laughs> yes. game. And then survive an attack by random bees. So, uh, yes, yeah, a very- Quite possibly the most dangerous game. People could have died. Yes, anyone allergic uh, could have gone into shock and died. Uh, yes. But these are trained competitors. You know, they've been out there among the elements before. Would not want to complain. Have always come back alive except for that one time. All right, so uh, Miss Mari Takahashi, very strong start. Take a hike, she. Okay. I've, uh, the pronunciation, I think, is up for debate. Uh, depending on the origin of, of delivery. Well, now you're starting to copy my accent that I'm doing, Sorry. and I don't like that. I, I promise do, you stop. Do your own accent. Okay. A very strong performance from Miss Takahashi. Yeah, eight but is a good. 
And then uh, a weak start from, from Mr. Damien Haas. Three buzzes on the first one. Yes, not on a completed one. operation. His team and halfway buzzes. drenched. Yes, is more than halfway. There were only five members uh, sitting beneath that slime. More than halfway drenched. But he turned it around, sir. He turned it around. I'm sorry I shouted directly into your ear. He turned you were it excited. around. excited. I am excited. It was an exciting moment in Smash Games. He is an exciting practitioner of the arts of surgery, and he came back. He came back strong, getting eight to tie Mari Takahashi. For a tie. Sending it into overtime. What a tie. And eventually defeating her in our overtime. Our second tie our in second Smash tie. Summer Games. Yes, uh, our second overtime. Very impressive. If Very this isn't match. the mark of a champion, I believe this at least puts Mr. Haas in consideration for the MVP. For MVP. Oh, 100%. Would you say he's in the running? I would say he's in the running. At I this think point. he's in the sprinting. Yes. All right, Chip, the next competition. Let's talk about Netflix and Chill. A staple in Smosh Summer Games and Smosh Winter Games history. And college dorm rooms. Now, uh, this was an interesting competition. Now, the only player on Team Mushroom Clout to even get an answer correct was, uh, let me check my notes, Lasercorn. I don't think you actually That's looked at any notes. fascinating. No, there are notes. Okay. Don't question the notes. They're there. Lasercorn, the only member of that team to get any right. Really? Thoroughly impressed. Do you yes. remember what he actually got correct? I, I believe it was the Hunger Games, yes. Oh, yeah. The yes. easy description well, of the Hunger Games. Well, it's yes. difficult. Laser Corps. Unlike Jovenshire's uh, uh, X-Men Apocalypse, which is not on Netflix. What? Well, did he get that wrong? He did. Well, I'm sure Lasercorn could have gotten that correct. And to be fair, Lasercorn doesn't watch crappy movies like The Hunger Games, so it was odd that he even knew that. He prefers uh, Battle Royale. The, ah, the Japanese yes. original yes, that that's based on. I anyway, prefer, uh, 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 what's the Vin Diesel movie where he's a babysitter? Fast and Furious. Okay. In this competition, we also got another look at some very shameful, cheaterous Man, cheating. You just you you don't like to see it happen. But you really kind of wish it just flies on the radar and nobody yes, notices. But you could clearly see Jovenshire writing the number five on the thigh of Wesley, and you can clearly hear him going from. I don't know this at all, uh, to, oh, I got it. This is an easy one. No. Uh, but what I think is safe to know is that everybody knows the fifth element. So any uh, shenanigans that may or may not have pursued. Well, they, they did definitely. Happen. Well, but uh, and we also should not, you know, Wes and Joven, they lived together. They had a romance that not many people know about. Did they? They did. And, oh, man. And that Are was there just, tapes? <laughs> uh, there might be. Uh, and sometimes Joven would just, you know, just gently grow, caress gently his back. Caress his back. Team Toxicity, due in part to this cheating, ended up taking the game. They won, making the score Team Toxicity 3, Team Mushroom Clout 3. Ladies and gentlemen, at this point in the games, the score was tied. And now, uh, Mr. Chip Whipley, let's talk about possibly the most intense Summer Games event of 2019, the Paintball event. First in its generation, actually. Never has this been performed in any Smosh Summer Games. Yes. So it was impressive to see these guys go head to head in, a, in a, an arena that they are not familiar with. There were some great moments. The young Mr. Lasercorn actually scored quite the headshot on Miss Mari Takahashi. His aim was good. Yes. Paint yes. across the board was good. Uh, he managed to get some paint, yes, on onto the targets. Hunkered down and kept the opponents at bay. Yes, yes, he did do that. He hid under a bridge. But yes. also, we have to remember that he was in World War II. Yes, so, quite old that one. Yeah, so he's, the he's young Lasercorn, quite old yeah. in fact. I don't know why they call him the young Lasercorn. Ironic nickname maybe. And then uh, we must admit uh, the Joven Shire had quite the moment too. He, the, uh, what some might even call a hero moment. So You know, what happens when you uh, corner a fox? They, I don't know because that's not a real saying. Are you sure? When you <laughs> yes. corner a fox they get, I'm they get scrappy. Sure. Well, co cornered animals are most dangerous is a saying. Hey, fox is an animal. All right. I feel like this all still works. Okay. And uh, he was hit many a times. Uh, yes. And, and and he was tired of it. We saw the determination. We saw the heat, yes. the anger, the lust for damage. Now, in he also eyes. did get shot and kind of ignored it during this very heroic charge. No, 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 he stubbed his toe. That is the ah. ouch that you hear. Oh, okay. Yes. Well, one time he was not able to ignore the pain is when uh, I believe he came face to face with laser corn and Lasercorn laid into him with the barrage from the seventh level of hell. 
that sent him whining and crying back to his base. I believe when you can see it in Lasercorn's eyes as he shoots Jovenshire more than he needs to, well, you can just see that he history. needed to be shot. Come back. Yes. Certainly, certainly bad memories for the Joven Shack. And but wonderful in, for Laser Club. But in the end, it was all for naught. For Team Toxicity wound up with the most paint on the board. Toxicity went up four to Mushroom Clouds three. Three. And it all came down to the belly flop competition. With Team Toxicity up by one game, Mushroom Cloud could send it into overtime by winning uh, the belly flop competition. Uh, and there were some strong bellies on there uh, was Mushroom Cloud. Some Laser corns especially, rocking the dad bod. Uh, well, well, yes, but the judges seemed to disagree with you. I too thought Mr. Laser Corn had a strong flop. Uh, there was definitely some prop work that went into it. It took preparation, uh, but unfortunately he scored very poorly. Uh, the other members of his team did very well though, especially uh, uh, one Miss Courtney Miller. Oh! Yes. The moment of fear for a lot of people. Yes, uh, she actually climbed atop a Laser Corn. And, uh, if Lasercorn was good for anything in this particular round, yes. it was helping Courtney get yes. a great score. Lasercorn uh, had a little bit of. Oh, uh, I'm sorry, Lazy Cup. No, I don't think I don't think that nickname stuck. Mm. I think that was something they threw out there, tried to get it to stick, but that thumb like would not. Spaghetti stick. against the wall. Yes, there but for it, a moment. But it would not stick uh, because no one no one calls him that. They all call him Lasercorn and Mr. Cool Guy. Anyway. Uh, she did manage uh, to keep her balance. Lasercorn kept his balance to get in range of that pool. Lasercorn then kind of tossed her in. She kind of jumped, tossed, and her feet came very close to the Nearly edge. Escaped Nearly escaped. Nearly escaped. Uh, but she did stick uh, the belly flop. A very high score, a 30. A 30. A 30. A, the a, only 30. A score you thought could not be topped until along came uh, Courtney's, I, I believe, arch nemesis. Courtney, Courtney freaking, freaking Miller. Miller, yes. Uh, with the the first ever seen in the belly flop competition 31, 31 score almost an impossible score almost seems illegal when you can get 10 10 and 10 like there should be some sort of rule against it against going over 30 yes when should it's be. 10 10 you would think you would think almost a case of poor refereeing almost or poor counting yes uh but in the end this 31 helped propel them to victory it was team toxicity in the end uh that won Breaking, I believe uh, they were calling it the streak. The stake, I believe. Well, it no, it was the streak. The stake. I believe. I think we have video evidence mm. of it being called the stake. I, I'm aware of some sort of gaff or a, a, a mistake. Oh. A, a mistake. A, a boner. Yes, that caused uh, the, the name on his stomach to be miswritten. Uh, but it was the streak. It was the streak, and the streak was broken. Finally, I, I thought the man would never lose. And really, with all, all I, I mean, if ever there was a games that was in question, it's this one for legality. Legal we could, we but could have. Also, the one time, well, uh, Laser One wasn't caught cheating well, in a summer game. The in, all I'm saying is the international committee could still come back. Oh, they could. And yes, uh, they're, they're, what, and the Statue this of game, Liberty on that is yes, two years. Yes, something like that, okay. and they could completely annul Just uh, the I, results. I hope not. The results from this games, and then reinstating the streak. I'm just saying that could happen. But in the end, uh, Team Toxicity uh, emerged victorious. Now let's uh, go to one last point here. I would like to talk about the awards. Ah, now, uh, the highlight of every yes. summer games. Now, the epic fail this year, of course, went to Mr. Ian Hecox. As we've discussed before. Yes, the, yes, uh, we discussed during the, the zombie no shootout. Yes, uh, no good. It actually made his previous uh, bow and arrow no look less cool. It's for me. almost like when Goldberg and the Undertaker went face to face in the uh, Saudi Arabia uh, WWE match, and it was so bad it yes. made both of their retirements look poor. Almost as bad as the human rights violations of Saudi Arabia. Now, Those two. Yes. Now, uh, on the other side of that, epic moment uh, went to, of course, Courtney. Miller, not Courtney freaking Miller, even though, though she scored, that was epic. Even though she scored a 31, uh, Courtney Miller put herself in more danger and definitely deserved the epic moment. Anytime death is around the corner and you shouldn't come out of something with all limbs and bones intact, that definitely That is an epic moment. Just the most epic. And now let's talk about uh, the last award. Uh, MVP. History was made. Was it? Was. Explain to me, uh, Mr. Chip Whipley, why this was so historic. Welcome to Chip Whipley's corner of epicness. Here we are discussing the longtime losing streak. And Ladies, LVP. if you ever find yourself in Chip Whipley's corner of epicness, run, <laughs> run for your lives. 
I'm sorry, go on, Chip. Uh, they can't run while they're chained. Mm. Ah, and uh, from LVP, multiple times in past games, Jovenshire did multiple LVPs. Uh, almost part of his brand at that point in time. He did not see much hope for him in this particular event. You can even see him just kind of like pacing in the back, just ready to get out of the sun and get food in his already large belly. And then somehow, the events of his times were starting to be described to him slowly. Some things he remembered from his immediate past. And then they called his name for MVP, and the world shook. The wow. world shook. Wow, this seems very personal to you, Chip. Well, it was like the OJ trials. We were all watching it, wondering uh, what was going to happen. Please do not make that comparison. Okay. The young Jovenshire, I believe, yes, I will agree with you, is somewhat of a phoenix story. Emerging from the ashes, the fires of LVP, into a glorious bird creature, or, or you know, like, like a raccoon emerging from a dumpster fire, covered in flames. Either way, that he, poor was, raccoon. he was MVP. Well, he shouldn't have been in the dumpster when it caught fire. Anyway, the point of the story is... Uh, MVP. It really is a Cinderella story. Went to the Jovenshire, and I think glass feet. And I think a lot of us were ready to see that happen. I think the world wanted it. Yes, he needed it. The end of a streak, and and the beginning of a of a beautiful moment for the Jovenshire. Really, just the moment. We we, we wouldn't expect that to yes. happen twice. No, it's, it was a flip. We can only hope it never will. Yeah. Uh, but yes. Uh, that, and that is the way the games ended. So I think we're going to sign off here until next year's Summer Games, or possibly a Winter Games if that or happens. Or any other interesting <laughs> yes. events where Brad Radford and, and Chip yeah. Whipley. This has been Brad Radford and Chip Chipley Whipley. <laughs> Chip Chipley Whipley signing off. Thanks for watching, everyone. If you want to relive all that sweet, sweet Summer Games action, you can go ahead and click right here. And don't forget to subscribe to the Lasercorn channel. And if you're looking for another Lasercorn video, you could go ahead and click right over here. Alright, see you next time.